Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. We will get started as it is 1101. Um, so good morning and thank you for joining us. My name is Kennedy Horton and I'm the program and event coordinator here at the Business Center. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Business Center is a provincially funded not-for-profit organization that offers information, programs, training, and resources to start up and expanding businesses at no cost to foster a prosperous business environment in the region. For future TBC events, please visit our website at www.tbcnps.ca forward slash events. So throughout this session, I will be monitoring the chat. So please feel free to ask any questions you may have. And basically I will collect all of the questions and then have uh, Scott answer your questions at the end of the presentation today. We are thrilled to welcome Scott Murphy, digital technology specialist, uh, who is assisting with the digital Main Street program in our region. The Business Center in Digital Main Street presents digital marketing and e-commerce for small businesses. When you're ready, uh, Scott, feel free to get started. Thank you, Kennedy. Thank you everyone for joining us this morning. I realize it's the middle of the day and uh, some of you might be very busy. So thank you very much for taking some time out of your schedule for joining. I uh, see Brenda, Yuri, hello, Francisco, hello. Olivia, hello. Jessica, hello. Pratik, hello. Darren, hello, Lisa, hello. Thank you so much. Um, and yes, yeah, so I just want to use today as basically a way to give you a bit of an introduction as well as try and have some thoughts come from this presentation about your business in particular and how you're currently doing digital marketing and e-commerce, but also how you can improve on your current strategy. Um, as well as providing information about Digital Main Street and the Business Centre on top of that. So, yeah, um, let's get started. Let's on to building an online presence. So, today we'll be discussing why having an online presence is important. Uh, what is Digital Main Street? How can Digital Main Street support your business? Um, how can you increase your return on investment on social media? and what is the cloud, and also applying for the Digital Transformation Grant of $2,500, which may be eligible to some of your businesses. Um, it's mostly for brick and mortar retail locations though. Okay, so why having an online presence is important. Um, there's a number of things why having an online presence is important. I've tried to summarize this just as four quick points, but really there's, like a hundred. So building brand awareness is one thing that's going to be great from your online presence. It allows your brand to be exposed to people that wouldn't normally interact with your business at all on a physical level. So whether they're people from out of town, they could be out of province or they could be international. These people are able to access your services, your products, speak with you and get an impression of who you are and what you do all remotely. And it also is much easier to access a wider range of people than you can just in your geographic location. So we're in North Bay right now, which is a population of about 54,000 people. And if you're a local business in North Bay and you don't have any online presence at all, well, then your tangible total target market can be 54,000 people, really. I mean, you can expand beyond that, but that's your core audience. And of those you know, you can try and boil it down to who's going to be a potential customer, who fits your service or product, and also who is able to pay the price that is your price point. So it really does help having an online presence to go beyond that level because it just allows so much more reach. Um, also increases in efficiency, increases in efficiency in sales, communication, um, online customer resources, also increasing the efficiency that you can update your website or update your online presence will really help in terms of getting up-to-date communications to the customers rather than relying on traditional print and paper kind of uh, communications, which, you know, if you're going to update a print application, then you've got to redesign it. You've got to organize with your printing service to print out copies. You've got to have those copies picked up and then you've got to have them distributed, which all just adds time and cost onto um, communication. So it will also reduce costs in that regard. So if you're used to spending a lot of money on physical media for marketing, um, you know, 
printing can be quite expensive sometimes and also can also be quite a waste because you might find at the end, you know, you've printed a thousand business cards or you've printed a thousand flyers for an event you have coming up. And maybe you only distribute 200 of those, those flyers. And then once the event's done, those 800 flyers that you paid for, which might have been a dollar a pop, are now effectively just, you know, useless and you've just spent 800 bucks. So um, I really try and recommend at least small businesses, especially where your resources are limited, to try and focus on online presence as being a way where you can build your brand bigger without needing the money to build it bigger, if that makes sense. Um, a few important statistics as well, 55% of Canadians shop on mobile devices. So that's important to think of when, okay, how are they going to view your online presence? Are they viewing your social media, your website, your Google My Business? through a computer, a laptop, a tablet, or a mobile device. And that will be important too on how your website or online presence uh, basically transitions to display on that device. Um, 27 million Canadians shop online with 77% expected in 2025. So that just shows you about seven in 10 people right now are shopping online in Canada. And that's a trend that's actually growing throughout the world and especially in Western developed countries. Um, where people have access to smartphones and internet connections quite easily. Uh, E-commerce sales are forecast to reach 50.44 billion Canadian in 2025. That's a growth of about 25% on the current year, which is about 40 billion for 2021. Um, and that's just money really that, you know, if, if you're not taking advantage of e-commerce, it's just money that's not coming into your business. So you're not even being exposed to this revenue which, you know, if, if your business can be successful and siphon one thousandth of a percent off that 50 billion, then it's just going to add to your profitability and also your return on everything you're doing as a business. So Digital Main Street, what is Digital Main Street? Well, Digital Main Street is a program that was funded in 2018 by the Ontario government and has been expanded into 2021 with support from FedDev Canada, Toronto Association of Business Improvement Areas, TABIA, and it's administered by the Ontario Business um, Improvement Area Association, which is OBR. The program provides free support, skills training and funding opportunities to eligible small businesses throughout Ontario who are looking to improve their digital presence. So I've been with the program now from the start of September, so I'm still relatively fresh in the role, but I found it just a great resource that is, you know, helping so many businesses free of charge as well, like everything we do is free, which I find is an often barrier to entry for a lot of um, small business owners because, you know, they've got limited resources, they've also got limited resources in terms of time they can allocate to certain tasks. And they don't have, you know, five hours to just learn Photoshop. They don't have, you know, 12 hours to edit a video for their promo that, that they're going to do on Facebook. So it really helps small businesses in that regard in providing a resource to them that's free and also has so, such variation where it's not restricted to one area. Like if, if you've got um, your business uh, registered with, with uh, Digital Main Street, and maybe you, you're only looking, oh, I want to try and grow my following on Instagram, or I want to try and have my website come up on Google. That could be the only thing you're currently interested in. But maybe from there, you might think in two months, okay, now I've got my Instagram following there. How can I make content that gets higher engagement? Um, what am I doing right? What am I doing wrong? Uh, can I integrate it with my Facebook account? All these questions that maybe you don't have the time to go after yourself. You'd, Maybe you're, you know, busy with the actual business itself, which is perfectly fine. And that's what Digital Main Street does. It's basically this supporting partner that can help any business in Ontario that's small compete with the big guys. So I've really enjoyed being a part of it so far and um, helping out the small businesses we've been in contact with. So how can Digital Main Street support your business? Well, what we try and do at Digital Main Street is boiled down to really six things. Um, it's identifying the strengths and weaknesses of your business currently with a digital business assessment. So that's sort of thinking, okay, are you present online? Do you use e-commerce? Very simple like questions. Do you know about social media? Are you comfortable with graphic design? Are you comfortable with video design? These sorts of questions, just to see where you are at with your digital presence. Um, the next thing we try and do is support you one-on-one -on -one with opportunities to improve this presence. So through training you in these skills, 
through auditing your website, through basically looking at everything your business does digitally and providing solutions and opportunities to try and develop that presence. Um, learning future-proof skills. So in weekly videos and training on the latest trends, best practices and digital business management solutions. And that can really cover so many things. Like we can talk one week about SEO. We can talk one week about uh, Instagram reels. We can talk one week about Facebook shops or um, marketplace. It's these online sessions that are free to join as well for small businesses. And they're just always Zoom calls as well. So they're quite easy to access. Um, and they're great just to try and give you some new information every week about what's going on. And, and you're not obligated at all to tune into them, which is great. So, you know, you could go to one a month or zero for six months. It's completely up to you. Um, and that's really important because being a future-proof skill, these are skills that are going to be used in the future. We're not trying to give you a skill that, you know, is just relevant now. It's only going to be used this year. This is a skill where you will learn a basic component of that skill through these sessions. And then these skills will only help you in the future in your business. So especially when it comes to graphic and video, because graphic and video is becoming the number one communication medium and also audio for businesses, whether they're communicating to clients, to suppliers, to everyone. Um, and also getting what your business does across to people. It's so much easier with graphic, video, and audio than it is just with text. So if you can be really good and efficient at making graphic, video, and audio uh, productions on a small scale that's replicable, that's just going to you know, increase your survivability and growth in the future beyond what you can think. Um, also, opening your store with the Shop Here program. Um, so that's a program which we do in affiliation with Google. And it basically will pair you with an e-commerce coordinator who will build you an online website with e-commerce functionality on either the Lightspeed, the uh, Shopify or the Square platform. Um, and these platforms as well come with various discounts and incentives from digital, uh, digital vendors through the Shop Here program. So it's great for small businesses who are looking to add a website or just simply get some sort of sales funnel online that you know, they're not having to build from scratch themselves. They're not having to code. They're not having to learn anything really about it. And they get helped along the way over four to six weeks with an e-commerce coordinator. And then from there, the store's launched and given completely over to the business owner where they should be able to use the skills they've learned from the program as well as use the program uh, resources itself because these programs provide great 24-7 customer service as well as like you know, really good frequently asked questions sections where you'll basically find an answer to everything you want. And they're quite mainstream. So there's often, you know, content creators on YouTube creating tutorials on how to get the most out of Shopify or um, five ways to increase your Square website's um, traffic visibility, that sort of thing. So they're great. And, and that just basically gets businesses online quickly without needing to allocate resources to that. And like website development itself can be quite expensive. Like it can range anywhere from two thousand to five to ten thousand dollars, depending on the scope of website you're trying to build. So these programs giving businesses a kickstart to get these websites going is incredibly helpful. And then of course there's like online ongoing fees with uh, these subscription programs where you know you're basically paying a retainer to the program to have the twenty four seven customer support and have them upgrading the firmware and adding new features to your website. And, but they're quite small. I mean, especially if your business is, is uh, profitable and making some money, they can range anywhere from free up to $50 on average. Um, but I highly recommend if any of you are looking to, you know, develop your online presence or need a website, um, definitely register for that program through digitalmainstreet.ca because it's really useful. Um, so fifth is utilizing marketing tools to teach uh, more customers through Google My Business, social media marketing, and search engine optimization. So we try to basically get our clients through Digital Main Street to get a general understanding of what these platforms actually are and also how they can be beneficial to the business. Um, and, you know, every business is at a def different level with this stuff. Like some might have a website, they might have a Google My Business they might have maybe a Facebook page or some may not have any at all. And that's perfectly fine because it's about trying to get them started with these uh, concepts and these platforms so that they can go from there 
and they're going to be way better than they were before they even talked to digital mainstream. Um, applying for funding also, like a few businesses, um, I think we've got on the call have applied for funding through the digital transformation grant, which supercharges your digital transformation strategy with $2,500 for eligible expenses. Um, this is a great program because it basically allows businesses to allocate $2,500 that they don't already have. So it's new funding coming in to try and transform their business digitally. So that could be whether it's going through digital marketing. Maybe you want to spend a bunch of money on ads to get people to come to your website or know about your business. Um, whether you're looking to redesign a website completely, maybe you've got an existing website that needs updating. Um, whether you're maybe looking to work remotely, which is often really common now, especially after the pandemic. So up to $1,000 of the grant can be allocated towards working remotely, like if you needed a tablet or a laptop that's going to make your business more efficient than it was before. So it can be super useful. And I really encourage people to try and um, at least have a read and see if you are eligible for that. Uh, let's move on. So how do I increase my return on investment with social media? So social media is, you know, it gets a lot of bad press, especially lately with Facebook and turning into meta and, you know, all the dis uh, divisiveness and polarization that happens on social media. Um, it gets a lot of bad press, but it's also where a lot of people like to go and talk. Um, and also share things, share ideas. And it's also one of the best ways for you to reach people online. Um, so just here, we have the monthly active users of uh, social media as of September, 2021. So these statistics are pretty relevant. So for Facebook every month, they've got about 2.9 billion users, which is you know about 30% of the population on the planet, which is really high. Um, Instagram have 1 billion, YouTube have about 2.4 billion, TikTok have about 837 million, Twitter have about 201 million, and Snapchat are creeping up with about 400 million at the moment. Um, so these platforms, you know, a lot of people are on them. I guarantee at least one person you know is using one or more of these platforms on a daily basis not just like a weekly basis or a monthly basis, but a daily basis. And businesses are finding great success because they're also able to basically monetize these platforms in different ways. Like Facebook, Instagram, um, even Snapchat all have e-commerce functionality now where they didn't before, where you can extend your website into these platforms and sell directly through the platform. Um, often at really reduced fees and things like that, like transaction fees. So it's a great way to extend your website beyond just having a website where people need to leave the platform and go there. Whereas if you can keep them on the platform, keep them engaged with your brand, these can be great platforms to monetize in that way. Also advertising revenue like YouTube. Um, YouTube provides great ad money if you're posting regular valuable content that has an audience and you're generating viewership. Um, you can also get you know, revenue from ad supported services on YouTube. And also like a lot of probably the biggest question I get from clients is which platform do I need to be on? And that really depends on who your audience is and what your product is. Um, it really depends because these different platforms have different age demographics, different time spent on the platforms, uh, different lifestyles even, and also different ways of viewing the content. So, you know, the, the way you make content for TikTok is going to be a completely different way you make content for Twitter. So you've got to think, okay, who is my audience exactly? How old are they? What do they do? What do they want to see? What's their attention span? Do they have disposable income? Are they comfortable shopping online? These sorts of things will really give you a good direction as to which platform you should target. Just as a general basis, I try to tell everyone at least have a Facebook business account because they're free to have, they integrate with Instagram, they also support posting of video, text, and images. And you can also have um, a lot of links to, you know, your website or promotions you're doing. And you can monetize it with the Facebook shop. So that's the main one I'd say just to start off with. Um, so what do they do and how can I increase my ROI? So they make your business more efficient. You can access way more customers than you can in person with Facebook posts. You can make one post that instantly would go out to your whole audience that post can take you five minutes, 30 seconds, depending on what you're trying to say. And you can also always structure the post with a purpose. 
So not just posting for the sake of posting, because I think a lot of people think they just need to be present on social media. So they just need to be posting something every week or something. But what that does is actually not make your social media good. It, it decreases followers because followers are disengaged. They're not getting value from your brand. Because at the end of the day, people are quite selfish and they're on social media because they want something. So they, they get value from something. So they're going to watch this because it's funny. They're going to watch um, this because it's informative. They're going to subscribe to this because it gives them some sort of value. Um, so creating your content with a purpose is key. So if you're going to create content, let's just say for an Instagram post, you've really got to have one, it's, it's a visual medium. So your, your thumbnail or your graphic needs to be great, needs to have great lighting, great color, um, great contrast in the image as well. Also focus in the picture. Don't have a blurry object that you're trying to talk about because that's just like people will scroll past that really quick. Um, and then also having the caption of the, of the posts being relevant. So having always something like a hook or, or like a value proposition at the front. So for Instagram, for instance, if I'm talking about uh, a drink bottle, I'm trying to sell a drink bottle, We'll have a picture of something that's aqua related or a drink bottle or something that's a question in the caption then like are you thirsty or it's quite hot weather at the moment or something that's just a hook or just a question that someone can answer in their head they're not going to answer like oh i am thirsty but they will have that little question in their head when they read it and then you have your information which is the fact-based content like um let's say water bottles are you thirsty today? Did you know your body is made up of 70% water? And dehydration is a major thing with the majority of day-to-day um, -day workers. Uh, our product, New Water Bottle Co., is uh, supplying environmentally friendly water that is ethically sourced and tastes great. It's fresh. View more at our website. Then you put a call to action. So the view more at our website or check us out now is your call to action, which is basically telling your audience that, hey, here's this thing, you should do it. And don't be afraid to do that because everyone on social media who's doing this well is, you know, having great success. And it's also a way where the audience, you know, they're given something, they're, they're given like a reason to do that call to action. It's not like you're just saying, hey, water, buy it. You're saying, hey, what is important? Maybe if you're interested, you should check this out. And here's how you check it out. You can go to our link, you can go to our website, and that drives traffic to the website. Also drives traffic to conversion through sales to the website as well. So creating with purpose is key. Socializing as well. So a lot of people think, why are my followers not going up? Why, why am I not getting likes? Why am I not getting comments? Um, socializing is actually the key to engaging the Instagram or Facebook or social media algorithm because in order to you, uh, for your brand to get engagement, you need to engage others. So whether that's going through liking all your followers' posts, whether that's creating comments, whether that's supporting a brand you really like or, or like someone you're really interested in asking them a question in their comments section, this isn't just a waste of time. Like it, it may be looking like, oh, I'm virtual signaling. I don't want to do that. Um, but this is the way to get the algorithm to prioritize your brand or your profile as an active profile. And that's how it's going to be spread through newsfeed, explorer sections, and also using relevant hashtags to categorize what you're talking about, especially in posts and things like that. But never hashtagging just for the sake of hashtagging, like a billion hashtags that aren't even related to your service, but having them relatable and so consumers or the audience can find value when they're searching that hashtag and you are the value provider. That's the way I'm trying to go with being social. Um, being consistent as well. It's so important. You could be, you know, the best social media poster in the world, but if you're only posting once a month, then it's just not going to keep your audience engaged. Um, also, you've got to be consistent with who you are and what your brand is. So if you are a premium supplier of handbags, you really need to be posting content that is one of very good quality because you're a premium supplier of handbags. So that should reflect in your marketing materials. Uh, two, you really should have those images portraying a certain, or the video or even text, portraying a certain elegance or something that's in line with your brand of handbags. Like, uh, you wouldn't expect Gucci 
to say, go on, uh, hey guys, how you going? Grab your backpack now. Like that doesn't suit the brand at all. It'd be something way more elegant. It'd probably have like some gold in the picture. It'd be something like, oh, you need to um, express the uniqueness in your prosperity or something like that in the caption, like really make it brand specific. So people will recognize that's you. And it also builds that thing we talked about before where you're building a brand awareness online. So people will have a picture of you in their mind, but even though they've never even been to your business before, they may have never even spoken to you before, but they'll be able to get a good gist of who you are by the sort of content you're posting. And being consistent, like I, I try to tell businesses be as consistent as possible. Um, you know, posting daily, weekly, I think at least two to five times a week um, on different platforms in different ways, not just two to five Facebook posts a week. Um, is a great sort of guide to go by. And if you can be more efficient with keeping your designs as well um, and, you know, making alterations and so you're not having to redesign things every time, that can help. Okay, next. What is the Hey, question? Scott, uh, I had a question about hashtags. Yeah, go, Yuri. Um, I know that they're important on Instagram. <clears throat> How important is it to use hashtags on, on Facebook, though? Yeah, it's still just as important on Facebook. So they both have the same way of basically, they will categorize content into these hashtags, which will make, if you're doing graphic design, for instance, or you're doing t-shirt design, um, you should really be using relevant hashtags because these are hashtags people will sometimes search or they will click on because they've been on someone's post like a graphic designer who's, who's you know, got an idea which they found interesting and they wanna know more about that idea. So if that graphic designer has used a relevant hashtag, they might click the hashtag under the image and they'll see a bunch of relevant ideas or relevant content that is valuable for them. So they're finding value. They're just trying to find themselves value and they can do that through hashtags. Thank you. No worries. Good question. Um, so what is the cloud? Uh, how can it make your business more productive? Well, the cloud is quite a general term, but it mostly refers to computer processes and operations and tasks that take place on servers that are not necessarily on your device itself. So what we're doing right now, Zoom, Zoom uses the cloud. Most online things these days use the cloud where all the data, all the content, the platform itself, you know, you can access it through your browser. So it's basically stored on the cloud and it also allows for collaboration, integration, cost reduction. Um, and I've just got a few examples because people might still be a bit ambiguous of, oh, what is the, how, how do you mean it stores my stuff? So like Google Drive is a cloud technology. Uh, OneDrive is a cloud technology. Uh, 365 Office is a cloud technology. Slack uses the cloud. iCloud, it's in the name, uses the cloud. Um, and Dropbox. And probably a few of you might have already used some of these technologies. So you, you get a sense of how that exactly works, where you don't necessarily need to store everything on your device and you don't necessarily need to, you know, create documents on your device in order to post on there. You can actually do it on the application online at anywhere from in the world. So it's really cool technology that's become popular over the last, I'd say 10 years from about 2010, 2011. Um, and it's just becoming more and more useful as internet connections get faster as well. Um, so collaboration, that technology allows us to be more efficient when working remotely. Like right now, we're speaking with 13 people from our living room mostly or from our office, which, you know, would be really hard to try and organize this meeting if I said, oh, everyone, you need to be at the business center right now. Um, and you need to get through security and do your COVID check and be there right now. And it's only going to go for 30 minutes. Whereas this allows, you know, way more flexibility and, um, you know, you can collaborate for hours. Like we collaborate through Slack. Um, I'm always doing stuff through Google drive. So it's really useful for that. And also like integrating, like integrating with your existing, um, processes as a business, like how you communicate you know, how you do business with point of sale systems can be really useful because, you know, you might not always be, if you're running a, a physical retail presence, like you, you might not always be at your POS. Like if you've got to access your sales for the last three months because you're doing your tax or something like that, you know, you might not be able to go into the store and it might be winter and, and you, you know, it's just annoying really. And it's 
one, it takes time out of your schedule and your resources. So um, integrating that where you can access like your POS records online through, you know, a lot of the current POS systems have it, uh, Shopify has it, Square have it, so is Lightspeed, where you can get these statistics, get this data at the click of a mouse anywhere is great and just makes businesses way more efficient. Um, cost reduction as well. So like utilizing the cloud technology is not only a way to be more collaborative, but it greatly reduces costs associated with printing, distribution, computing, and information loss. So um, you can store, like, for instance, if you're a graphic designer, you can store all your graphics in the cloud. You can have access to those wherever you are. Maybe you're with a client in person and you want to pull them up something really quickly on your phone just to show them, but you don't have the 10 megabyte PN, uh, PNG file on your phone. You can just whip open your iCloud or your Slack or your Google Drive you know, share it with them, show it to them in person. So it's really grateful that way where, you know, otherwise 15 years ago, you would have had to have had a picture of that if you are meeting in person. You need to go print that out, make sure it's really good color, really good uh, dimensions, um, make sure it's the right size as well. And you're taking that in person to a meeting where who knows, you know, in the meeting that the asset could be not even looked at because maybe the meeting got cut short or, um, that asset might, you know, once the meeting's done, you build this whole poster for the meeting. And now the, the post is basically useless because it might have dates that were, you know, restricted to that meeting time. Um, so using the cloud to have all your work really helps because you can just go into existing, all the previous work you've done. And maybe you've got to do something in a month that's really similar to a thing you did a year ago, but you got to change some stuff on it. You can do that so easily in the cloud, it's great. Um, so let's move on. Also, I'll just go on about cost reduction because it's also reducing the um, processing power um, that's being consumed by doing a task because these things have been done online or they're stored in the cloud. You know, your computer might have a hard drive or it might use RAM or something like a processor where if you're doing graphic editing or video editing, um, and maybe you're doing documents as well, that can really slow down your computer, slow down your productivity. And if you can store all these things online and access them, it just makes your computer way more quicker or your device and you're able to get things done a lot quicker, which can help there. Okay, so applying for the digital transformation grant of $2,500. So this grant is um, focused on providing eligible brick and mortar small businesses with a digital uh, assessment, online training, and a $2,500 grant to implement their digital transformation plan. Fund allocations can include digital marketing, website development, hardware, software, and digital training, as I said before. For more information and to see if your business is eligible, I would recommend checking out that link, which I can post also in the chat, which I might do right now just to have it there for people. So that will basically just give you some general information about the eligibility for the grant. You know, what can you do to become eligible? Right now though, the grants are expiring in terms of applications at the end of the month. So. Um, right now, there's a lot of people in the training process for the grant, um, and I'd be very surprised if they extend it beyond November because it was actually meant to expire um, in terms of applications at the end of October, but they extended it just because they had a bit more money to allocate, which was great to get some of the slower people, you know, on their way through there. So, um, yeah, it's a great program. I'm really hoping they do it again next year because they've done this grant in different iterations. Like this is the third iteration of the digital transformation grant where they've changed the eligibility requirements each time. Like I think at first it was only for businesses that were located on Main Street in, in their respective town. So like if you weren't on the Main Street, then you weren't even able to apply, even if you had a retail presence and you're paying, you know, commercial tax and things like that. So they've made it way more flexible now where it's basically any brick and mortar presence that has a retail component where the customer can walk in, can buy something, have a retail experience. And it's just opened it up to a lot more businesses that were not eligible earlier on. So I'm hoping they you know, bring it back again next year with some funding 
And also they might even make the restrictions or the eligibility requirements a bit more lenient to provide maybe towards businesses that, you know, participate in pop-up shops or they might do events only where they do have a physical presence, but it's not all the time. I think that'd be a great way because a lot of businesses these days, you know, um, it's hard to justify paying for a retail presence, especially during COVID where you've had shopping centers closed down, like, you know, and you've had government subsidy come in, but if you're paying rent, you know, every week, every month for your retail presence and it's not generating any revenue, it's just like, you know, it's not good <laughs> for the long-term survivability of the business. So I really hope, you know, they take the learnings at Digital Main Street from this program and the experience of COVID and try and think, okay, businesses are becoming a lot more hybrid in future, like the next 10 years, I feel like there's going to be a lot more businesses that are home-based or a hybrid where they do use pop-ups or events or like local markets to do business or maybe even in-person like, like consults to do their business rather than paying, you know, two grand a month, five grand, 10 grand a month out of their wallet every month for a retail presence where they might only use that retail presence nine to three, Monday to Friday. And it's like, well, why am I paying for eight weekend days a month when I'm not even there, you know? Um, so yeah, that's that program. So it's been really good so far. Um, additional services. So additional services, we do a digital main street. I think I talked about them a bit before, but just to give you a summary. Um, so, uh, social media marketing, we can help you out with social media marketing strategy, as well as content design guides, as well as, you know, tutorials on captions, um, how to get the most out of social media, which social media to be on, how to reduce the amount of time you're spending creating these posts, because that can add up, especially if you're a small business of one or two people and you're spending, you know, two hours a day making social media posts. That's a big portion of your resources going towards that. Um, so being, you know, as efficient there where you can drop that two hours down to 15 minutes can pay massive dividends going forward. Um, content creation training that also follows that subject where, you know, being competent with simple softwares like Canva or Square or Photoshop even or um, Photoshop Express, they can be great ways to get your content to the level you want it to be and also have like a, a uh, library of assets where maybe you need that picture you posted or that thing, that promotion you posted back in 2018. Um, and you just want to change like the dates on it. So, you know, having that accessible through the cloud and being able to bring that in, you're just going to save so much time. You've already got the messaging there that you liked before. You're not having to spend time, you know, oh, how do I do this again? What font do I use? Oh, the color scheme doesn't work. And, um, you know, as I said before, like image, audio and video is becoming so important going forward. And uh, it's only going to increase in importance going forward as well. So uh, also becoming just competent with a basic video editing software like Adobe Spark. A lot of these softwares are, are free or, or have a free subscription level. So I fully like I've encouraged everyone I've worked with to get a competent with at least one of these. So you're not having to pay someone like you don't need to pay a, a uh, marketing company or something every month to do some social media graphics for you because you're able just to whip open your computer and, you know, get one done. Um, Google My Business, SEO and 360 Photos. So these are really good for um, businesses with websites as well as um, already having like a social media presence or uh, a retail presence as well. Google My Business basically will integrate with Google Maps where your business will come up. So I don't know if you've ever searched Google Maps, but you're on Google Maps and you can see businesses located and you can actually click on them and it'll give you a little profile spiel about their opening hours, their services. That's a Google My Business profile. So they're free to create. I really encourage everyone to do that, especially if you want to be searchable on Google. It helps with the algorithm. So if someone's typing a query like, I want to find digital marketing services, North Bay, um, then you're going to be able to be listed there. You'll come up on the map if you're you know, relevant to them in terms of like your website's optimized for that sort of search query. Um, and your Google My Business does mention maybe digital marketing or North Bay. So that's a really useful free tool. SEO, where that goes, is basically optimizing your web presence for searchability in a search engine. So if you're on Google or Bing, however you search, 
Um, it's basically organizing the ranking of results that come up and how to make your result rank at least on the first page, if not at the top of the results when someone's typed in a general query like digital marketing in North Bay. Um, and that's really important. And what we do at Digital Main Street is we can do an audit of your website to see if it is um, searchable, if it is loading correctly, if it's also loading correctly on different devices. Um, and we can give you some great feedback there. Also putting together ta a task list. If you're wanting to say, uh, I want to use my grant to um, spend two and a half grand on redesigning my website, which is often a common thing. We can give you an SEO audit, which will basically then be really simple for your developer to read and say, okay, so they need to improve all this stuff to be searchable on Google, as well as having a task list. I want to add a um, checkout window to my website or, I want to add a bookings window where they can book my services or I want to sell my handcrafts, that sort of thing. Um, so that really helps with web development and 360 photos are more for businesses with a retail presence because what we do is we go into the actual building itself or the storefront and we take a 360 degree image, which we then edit and that image is uploaded to your Google My Business account and your Street View account. So when people are searching your business on Google, they can get a basically a virtual tour for free if they just click the photo under your business name where they can see a 360 uh, photo sphere where they can navigate around, they can see, oh, okay, it's a safe business. Um, it looks legit. Um, it's, you know, it's got good lighting. It doesn't look dirty. It really actually builds trust if you've never interacted with the, with the customer before, um, which is often, as we went back to those statistics earlier of 70, 72 to 77 percent of Canadians shopping online with 50 something percent on mobile devices. A lot of people are, in, are interacting with your business for the first time through one of these devices. So having that extra you know trust and that extra kind of experience for the customer can be so vital in them you know clicking your link or click they're so much more likely to you know at least follow up with the service make a checkout pro, uh, purchase or even save you as a bookmark or maybe learn more about your services. They don't even buy anything, but maybe they tell a friend, oh, I went on this great website. Oh, they do this service for, it's really cheap or they've got these really cool products and they can share a link to your website. So it just increases the sharing and stuff like that. Um, and also one-on-one -on -one tech support and advice. This is pretty general, but I also try and provide really good, like, you know, if a customer has an issue with something that may not even be any of these things, it could be my printer doesn't work or my Facebook, I, I can't find where to post this on Facebook or, um, you know, what, what's going on with this video that I'm trying to edit. I like to try and just give some general support and advice to them. So I always encourage people, you know, if you're ever curious, like, and you want, some a second pet, uh, second set of eyes on something maybe you've just done a photo shoot and you're looking for you know if there's anything you can do better or if there's anything that stands out i fully encourage people just to you know shoot me an email at scott murphy dts at gmail.com or um you know call me as well but email is is much better because i find we're able to capture the information and have a record of it and i can go back to that and look at what you said whereas if you just called then maybe you know later on in the future, we won't remember the exact specifics of what we talked about in that call. So I find email just the, the best way to communicate on average, unless it's urgent, but yeah, email's easy for me. Um, so um, key takeaways. So thank you so much for listening so far. I realize it's been a bit of a mouthful and I realize I've tried to get a lot into one presentation just to give everyone a, a bit of bang for their buck for spending the time with us today. Um, so number one, get online. If you're not online right now, then why not? You probably should be. As you know, we've talked about so far, it seems like a useful place to be. Uh, register your business with Digital Main Street. So if you just head to digitalmainstreet.ca, you can register your business and take a 10-minute digital assessment. And that will get you in contact with me and we can talk about how we can improve those various aspects of your business. Or if you've just got any questions and you're looking for some general assistance, that's a great way to go. Um, E-commerce is growing uh, in popularity. We proved that uh, 40 billion Canadian this year in revenue uh, forecast at 50 billion Canadian in 2025, which, five, which is 5% year over year between now and then. Um, and that's a really important statistic because the actual retail revenue for Canada as a whole was 606 billion. 
for the last financial year. And that was actually down from 615 billion uh, for 2020. So if you think about it, e-commerce is going up, but total revenue is kind of plateaued. So e-commerce is becoming a bigger and bigger percentage of total revenue in Canada year over year. So it doesn't really make sense to not have an e-commerce strategy, especially if you're a business that's looking to grow. Um, maybe you're looking to meet new people. Maybe you're looking to be more efficient or you're looking to improve just a skill set like digital marketing. It's a great place to be and a great place to make some money. Um, get social. Um, I think social media, you know, it's useful. It can be an ally. Don't think it's just, you know, a place where people go to complain because it's also a place where people go to learn things, new ideas, also to express themselves. Um, so having a social media presence is highly recommended. It is a thing you do have to maintain and put effort to. Um, same as e-commerce. So, you know, don't just think these things are going to happen, especially if you're a one-man show or one-woman show. Um, you've really got to prioritize them and say, okay, this week I'm going to dedicate at least 5% of my time to social media or I'm going to dedicate 10% of my time to my e-commerce channel of the business. And having that consistency is what's going to get the rewards because if you're not consistent and you just, you know, every now and then have a look at it, then there's so many more businesses that are more competitive and more hungry for those sales that are going to overtake. So it really, you know, just pays dividends to be social. Um, Digital Main Street is currently funded until February 2022 with digital uh, transformation grant applications closing November 30th. So as we said, if you're in the DTG program now and, and you're training, I really recommend getting those applications in as soon as possible. And um, I'll be around at least until mid-February to help out from the business center. And then um, we'll see how the program goes with further funding opportunities. And if you're ever curious about anything I've talked about today, you're welcome to visit digitalmainstreet.ca or you can contact me directly, um, Scott Murphy, Digital Technology Specialist, and that is my phone number. And that is my email address, scottmurphydts at gmail.com. So... Thank you so much for listening. I would love to take some questions. I will read through the chat now and throw it back to Kennedy. Yeah, absolutely. So um, actually a lot of the comments in the chat are very positive feedback, uh, Scott, of how you helped some of the clients already. Um, they've been really pleased with your services. So thank you for that. And thank you for today's presentation as well. It was very informative. So. And like we said, Scott's going to open it up to questions. There's nothing necessarily in the chat per se, uh, other than positive feedback, Scott. In terms of questions, feel free to unmute yourself and ask uh, your questions to Scott. Sounds good. So I don't, uh, I don't really have a question, um, but I could. Uh, there, there's been a girl that's been helping me with my website through Digital Main Street, and it's going to be going live on Monday. It's yeah, almost absolutely. done. Um, awesome. Would it help to share my screen and show you guys what it looks like? Um, yeah, I, re I reckon maybe I we could just do that. I, th I think we should do that one on one, Yuri, because I'll be okay. able to get a lot more feedback based sure. on. Um, and I think also, uh, like with the website not launched yet, I'd hate for you to show the website now and have a button not load with other people. Yeah, <laughs> it, like, lo it looks pretty good. Like it's pretty much good to go. I'm just tying okay. up a few things on the back end of it. But uh, anyways, yeah, okay. we can do that one on one. I thought it might yeah, help yeah, just to show so, people what uh, what their site yeah. could look like. Yeah, great. I'll um I'll send you an email and we can schedule a a one on one appointment if you like. And cool. we yeah, sure. But, Cool. Any other questions? I don't see anything, Scott. Sorry, I just wanted to say this was a great session, Scott. Very informative as usual. So thank you for your time and putting this together. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you for your comment too. Hey, you earned it, buddy. <laughs> thank you. Awesome. All right, well, if there's no other questions, um, Scott uh, did put his contact information in the PowerPoint slide there. So definitely feel free to reach out to Scott if you do have any questions. Scott, again, thank you so much. Very informative session. Um, and we definitely look forward. I'm sure your clients will look forward to working with you um, as well as we look forward to seeing, um, you know, what takes place with the Digital Main Street program uh, in the future. 
So thank you very much and uh, everyone have yourself a great day. All right, thank, thank you for you. your time. Your presentation was wonderful. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Pratik. Thanks, Scott.